Hey tubers, so it's sun, Saturday morning, Saturday morning, and I was supposed to be starting the 40 kilowatt hour test, but have since decided instead of doing the 40 kilowatt hour test that I should do some upgrades and improvements before I do that. What am I going to do? Little things first. Little things like I've got all the. And look at that. That is one sexy flat line. 0 0.01 of a volt difference. Okay, back to what I was going to do. Now these, uh, the what is that black and white there, are the power cables. And now the power cables jump off down here. So I've got a fuse here, white and black, which is positive and negative. And they sort of come down there and then in through the board here and then behind there because it's sagging down and then up there now what I've done I don't know if we can even focus on that it's pretty horrible but what I've done is I've put two cables into each one of these um, bootlace and they're sort of starting to slip out uh, we were playing with it yesterday testing stuff and and that's sort of damaged and very very dangerous I don't like that at all uh, and in fact we blew a couple of fuses yesterday because I've got a, only got three fuses left I'm gonna redo those wires there I'm not going to do them any thicker, but the boot laces are one millimeter boot laces, and it's only 0 0.2 of a millimeter wire. So I'm going to. It's against what everyone says, but I'm going to solder them. I'm going to solder the the wire up a little bit, give it a little bit of extra girth, and then probably hot glue it. So you got the boot lace there. Obviously, that's a bigger boot lace. I'm going to see if I can put the wire in there and actually hot glue it to give it a little bit more strength. Um, now talking about those boot laces, they will be um, going into here as well if I've got enough. There we go. So I'll be putting boot laces onto those. I don't think I've got enough to finish the job. I've got a new boot lace tool that I've never actually used, and a smaller boot lace tool for all those. I've ordered heaps more of them. I haven't got them yet, but I want to get this done. Braided sleeve. And we got some five millimeter heat shrink to go around the ends to make it all nice and neat and tidy. We also have this shunt trip. It is all brand new. Now I haven't put much thought into this and it may change, but if I replace that there, um, I'm gonna have to move these up. And I've got these two cables going to this bank here. But what I'm having a problem with is getting these two banks balanced with all these banks. Um, talking to many people including Batrim and it's probably because these cables are so much longer um, there's probably five to eight meters extra length in these cables than there is in these ones uh, down here so I think I'm gonna put a big old loop of cable in there to try and replicate the length I don't have a lot of that cable left and I don't really want to buy any more but it might make it easier to balance okay let's do this first we got to get this table out of here and make some room so I can work over there. Let's see what we can get done. So I didn't end up recording much of what I was doing. It was just taking too long. So I was, well, I was changing my mind, but we've made a little bit of changes, just a few little changes. And I don't know why that one just went, ah, uh, cloud edge, just come back on. So the batteries are nice and balanced out. We got 16 and 17. Oh, now it's doing an idle bypass. So what have I changed today? I've run the cable, the negative cable up the side there, all the way up the top. I had a single sitting here before. I've put a, a dual pole in, and then I've got the cables that come around at the top. I took that charger out from there. I never liked the look of it up there. And then it goes into a combiner. Now in the combiner I've got down here, that is a fuse for the watchmon. So I've rewired all the watchmon again, neatened up all the cables along the top, made it look much neater and tidier. I've also added these two cables here and a few other cables down here. I haven't tidied up yet, but basically those cables there are a state of charge meter that of course you can't see. 
So it's only only one at a time. So the the bottom LED, I've got it ran the wrong way, really. That's actually fully charged, and then and it'll bleep all the way down to flat, based on your state of charge here. So I'm at 101 percent. So that's something new I've added. I haven't played with it very much, but that light there, the top light there. Mimics that light there, so you can actually tell all your, um, a lot of stuff from what that color is on that bulb on the LED. So that's a pretty cool upgrade. I'm actually going to put that one sort of into my bedroom. I think I'm going to sort of try and turn that one off somehow and put that inside the house somewhere. I think that'd be good just to have sitting there. Um, now, it's there, all the lights aren't on progressively from one color to the next just to save power because it's just a waste. You only need to know which which one it is and that's fully charged so god that looks good okay what else have we done um obviously we've got the disconnect here which is a 50 amp from the shed roof i haven't connected up in this one yet um i'm still going to work on that in the next couple of days so the, the plan is with these i'm going to put one of these on every pack so even in this shed and there's a big old mess each of the packs on the positive i'm going to work out how i can put a disconnect so whichever pack that I work on, I can just turn it off and then I can work on it and then put it all back together again. So that is what else I'm doing. I think that's a very good idea actually. Um, and it doesn't hurt, I can turn that off live and it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter anything. Right, shunt's still in the same place, but this beautiful bit of gear has been added. Now my Sparky dropped this off to me yesterday and it is an NHP shunt trip. So it's 125 amps DC, and that is a 24 to 60 volt shunt with the two wires that come out there, and then go all the way up to here. So basically now, uh, in a minute, I'll show you the software side of it, but the Batrium software is now controlling on and off. So if at any point the Batrium software sees on a given set of um, instructions within the software if uh, say high voltage or low voltage or extreme temperature um, it will actually turn the entire system off now i've got the power wired in so the shunt um, is draw is this is 48 volts so this is coming from up here but i've got all these power here coming from up underneath here so I've always got power, um, even if the batteries are, are, are dying, even if the batteries are 6 volts, for the, instead of 48 volts they go to 6 volts, that's still going to run because that'll actually run all the way down to 5 volts, 4 volts I think. So it'll go from 4 to 60 volts. Um, so I can keep that alive as long as possible. Um, and if I can possibly get comms out of it, that'll be good. If not, it can log data and um, try and work out what went wrong. So that's the plan behind that. Um, and also if this is plugged in to here I've always got power and if it needs to shut down that it still can um, the next I've got to put on is the fans and then I have to rewire back in um, uh, I don't know whether I'm gonna put that one back in or that charger the LK charger or not I like the I like the layout and it seems to be working so tubers um, next I was gonna do the 40 kilowatt hour load test this morning but I really did want to um, get that installed and sorted. Um, it really does bring this project to the next level with safety and security when it comes to this sort of thing. So let's go up to the shed now and I'll show you some of the software settings to do with both um, the LED light and that. Okay, so just quickly here we're back up in the workshop now. We thought I thought I'd run through that little LED status. So to set that up you click on menu, you click on hardware, then you click on expansion and then you click on edit then you click on it would have normally been none then you just go eight segments SOC and then it lights up the corresponding eight segments with a light to tell you how charged or discharged your battery is state of charge also we have got the shunt we have to go to control logic shunt trip I think you call it and under critical you can click edit and then you can change everything. So you can change the low cell voltage, high cell voltage, lo low shunt voltage, high shunt voltage, low cell, high cell um, in temperature, 
and a bunch of other things as well that I'm not going to play with because I don't really know about them yet. Um, it looks like you can even do charging amps by the look of that. That's pretty cool. I don't understand all that yet. So all that I did was change the high and low cell current. I haven't changed the high and low shunt yet. Um, but I changed uh, from the defaults to 60 seconds on the delay transition. And that just stops it from um, turning off after one second or something. So if it drops below three volts for one second, it just doesn't turn off instantly. So there you go, tubers. I'll leave it with you on that one. I'm going to go and set up for the 40 kilowatt hour test. If you like it, like it. If you hate it, hate it. If you want to subscribe, please do so. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.